Hi. Recently I saw a how-to video about making bagels, and the recipe they used was just ridiculous. So I decided to make our own how-to video. So here you go. This is the Bagel Cafe's How to Make Bagels. Now, our bagel cafe is located in Bangkok, Thailand. Now, some of you may know this is a very hot and humid country. So, although the ingredients in this recipe should be fine uh, for no matter where you are, uh, some of the timings on the proofing and, uh, and whatnot may have to be adjusted for your climate. Just keep that in mind. Check the description below for a list of ingredients and measures. Okay, so here we go. Okay, we'll start with some high gluten bread flour. Please make sure you don't use all purpose flour. Then some plain white sugar. and some regular old table salt. Now this is instant yeast. If you're going to use any other kind of yeast, uh, the amounts are going to have to be adjusted, uh, so keep that in mind. This is vegetable oil, not olive oil. Just use any kind of vegetable oil. This is soy oil. Okay, now I'm using basically a cheap Chinese equivalent of a KitchenAid mixer here. So you could do this recipe by hand. I really don't recommend it because you'd get really tired with the kneading. All right. So first, just, you know, mix up the dry ingredients just a little bit. No big deal. And now we're going to have to add, uh, start adding water. Now. The amount of water that you'll have to add is somewhere between a one and a quarter and one and a half cups. Please add this slowly. Okay, you don't want to just dump it all in because you might put in too much. So start the mixer off on, on your lowest setting just until stuff starts to come together. And as soon as it does start to come together, go ahead and, and turn up the speed to somewhere around the medium. Okay. Um, now as you can see here, you'll be looking at this kind of shredded material and you think, oh wow, this is never going to come together. So you have a tendency to add way too much water. Um, add the water slowly and turn up the speed to high um, and I promise you it'll come together better than you think. Uh, you will have to adjust water but as you can see I'm just putting in a tiny little bit at a time. Okay and there it starts to come together. All right, it's starting to turn into an actual dough now. So you want to knead this longer than you would think. Somewhere in the vicinity of oh, about four or five minutes. Okay, because bagel dough is supposed to be quite um, springy. As you can see here, the way to check it is give it a little push See what it's like? Pull it up. You see how it springs back there? That's what it should be like. Okay. You want to go until the dough is almost smooth. Now this step is fairly simple. Just take some kind of uh, spray, you know, cooking spray, put it, you know, around the bottom of a bowl, 
put your dough in, push it down, turn it over. Okay. Now, for the proofing, unless you have a proof box like we do, you just want to use a regular kitchen towel, which has been moistened, cover the bowl, and set it aside in a uh, fairly warm uh, place with no drafts for 10 minutes. Now, if you're not using instant yeast, that 10 minute time will have to be adjusted to longer. Okay, so now the proofing's done. You may notice that the dough has seemed to multiply. This is because we're making a lot more than uh, the recipe that is down in the, the description below. Now this is uh, cinnamon raisin, and you can see the uh, regular dough over there. For the portioning, you can either use a kitchen scale like this one. Uh, it doesn't have to be a digital one. You can just use a regular old-fashioned kitchen scale. Or, like I'm doing with the cinnamon raisin, you can just portion them out evenly. The size of each bagel is not all that important, but what is important is that you get them about equal. Okay, you don't want some that are really big and some that are really small. So now I'm going to show you one of the ways which you can use to shape a bagel. This is the way we use in the shop. It's, to me, a lot easier, and you get a better shape afterwards. You just roll it out, wrap it around your hand, pinch it closed, and then you roll it on the counter back and forth a few times. And there you go. That's it. It's not that difficult. If your dough came out a bit dry, you may have a little problem cl uh, getting the end to seal together. Well, that's not such a big deal. Just have a little water on hand, and that will help. You just put a little water on the end before you seal it like this. On the other hand, if your dough is too wet, you're going to have some problems here because it's just going to be sticking to everything. Bagel dough, and one of the things I love about it, is bagel dough is a very clean dough to work with. It doesn't stick to you. It doesn't stick to the surfaces. So when you're mixing your dough, this is why you want to add water a little bit at a time. You don't want to over moisten it. Also, if you over-moisten, it will overproof, and that'll affect the consistency of the bagels. Okay, so now we're done with the cinnamon raisin, and we're going to move on to the regular dough. Now, for dividing up the dough, I like to use a knife. Um, my assistant in the shop likes to use uh, scissors, you know, kitchen shears. It's totally up to you, whatever you feel comfortable with. It doesn't make any difference whatsoever. The portions we use in the shop, we try to go for about 135 to 145 grams per bagel. Um, as you can see here, I have obviously you know, cut it a bit too small. It's no big deal, just add some more. When you roll it together, it'll combine easily. Uh, although, having said that, it is always easier to cut, uh, to take away than it is to add. So try, if you're going to uh, be portioning out these bagels, try to make your portions on the big side, and then you can take away, and it's much simpler. All right. Now, as you get more practice, you'll be able to do this faster and faster. Uh, I saw a YouTube video of a guy who seems to take about five seconds to roll each bagel. He's really amazing. I'm not quite that fast. But then he makes 500 bagels a day, and uh, we don't. Okay, now this was important. If your dough starts to grow a skin on it, you know, it starts to dry out and get a skin, go ahead and just flip it over. It'll be fine. Okay, if it grows another skin, flip it over again. All right, now here I'm going to show you the other way you can use, some people find it easier, to shape a bagel. Take some dough, roll it into a ball, and basically just 
push through with your fingers and thumbs. All right, so there we get a nice hole started, and then this is, you do the gunslinger on it. You want about an inch, inch and a half hole. You don't want too big of a hole. These are bagels, not donuts. All right, here's a little bit closer view of uh, of the shaping. A lot of people think that making bagels is difficult. It's really not. You know, just a little bit of practice, and it's really easy to do. You just roll it out. There you go. Wrap it around, seal it, and roll it a little bit more. That's it. Here's what they all look like. Make sure when you're putting them uh, on the trays, they're not too close together. When you're all done with the shaping, cover them again with a wet kitchen towel for uh, somewhere around 20 minutes. Again, you're going to have to exp uh, experiment with the time because it'll be a little bit different for you. Now the reason we didn't want them so close together is because as you can see here, uh, they puff up during the proofing. And you don't want them touching, that's a bad thing. Uh, the way you know it's done proofing is you can tell by the consistency. All right, they're a little bit tacky, they're a little bit soft, uh, but this is how it should look after the proofing. And so now we're on to the boiling. All right, now this is just water with some honey added to it. All right, uh, nothing special. Please be careful when you're putting them into the water. Do it gently and be careful of putting your hand in the water as I just did. It doesn't feel good. And I do it about once a day, so. Okay, now our bagels are floating up right on top of the water. Okay, that's ideal. However, if your bagels or your dough is a little bit denser, they'll float either lower into the water or they might even sink right to the bottom. That should be fine. They'll float up to the top within 20 or 30 seconds, uh, you know, 20, 30 seconds. You don't want to boil these too long, okay? As you can see, boil it about 45 seconds is plenty. Turn it over. And then we have another 45 seconds. Don't overcrowd, overcrowd the pot either, because they need to have um, they need to have room to be able to move around. Okay, so they're just about ready to come out now. Now to take them out, you can use any kind of uh, any kind of you know big device like a spider or this colander with handle that I have. I don't really know what it's called. Uh, but please just, you know, they're still delicate, so be careful when you're taking them out. And you remove them from the water, and it's pretty simple. Okay, just real quick here, I'm going to show you uh, the difference between the cinnamon raisin, which is a denser dough, and the regular dough. You see how the regular dough sits almost up on top of the water there? And the cinnamon raisin is quite a bit deeper? Well, that's just normal. If you have some, it's not going to make a big difference in the end result. So don't worry too much. So now we're all done with the boiling, and what you want to do is you want to remove them and put them on uh, a kitchen towel, uh, and this is important. Make sure before you do that, you spray the kitchen towel with uh, some cooking spray. You don't want the bagels to stick to it, all right? So it's pretty simple. Just take them all out, and please be careful. 
they did just come out of boiling water. Uh, so you might want to remember that. And as my assistant told me here... <laughs> okay, so here we're going to put on some of the toppings. These first one uh, are just salt. Now, some people would prefer to uh, take the bagels and dip them into the topping. You know, that's fine. Uh, we've found that this works better for us. Um, but if you're going to do it this way, make sure you have a mister with water in it around. Uh, it'll help the topping stick uh, to the bagels a bit more. And it'll also give them a nice sheen. All right, so here we have salt. This is sesame he's putting on now. Um, don't skimp on the toppings, because don't forget that, especially stuff like sesame, a fair amount of it's going to fall off the bagel. So make sure you put plenty of it on there. Uh, there you go. Okay, finally in focus. <laughs> Here we are. These have been in the oven for a few minutes, and look how much they've puffed up. This is after 10 minutes. It's time to turn them. So you just take them out. And I'm in a hurry, so let's just speed this up a little. Can't wait to eat these. You know, the real downside to owning a bagel cafe is that you have to sell them and you can't eat them. All right, so this is after an additional 10 minutes. This is the kind of color you want to look for. Uh, nice, deep kind of gold. Um, there you go. This is the everything bagel. Uh, all right. It's going to be uh, a little bit you know, crusty, but it shouldn't be too hard. This is now, I want to show you the salt bagel to show you that bagels don't need a giant hole in the middle of them. Okay, this is actually how they should be, small or no hole. This is that one that we, uh, we rolled into a ball and punched through with our thumbs, and you can see what I mean about, uh, about the shape. Also, guys, please use tongs. Um, I don't normally just touch the bagels right out of the oven. I was just trying to show you. So these will be hot. Now, this is our garlic bagel. If you're going to do garlic, this is, uh, you don't want to cook it much longer than this because you don't want the garlic to burn. Uh, same would go for onion bagels. Okay, after you take them out of the oven, put them on a wire rack to cool for... A you know, at least 20 minutes before you want to cut into them and start toasting. And that's it, guys. So if you have any questions, uh, you can check out our Facebook page, contact us that way, or on Twitter. Um, you know, love to hear any comments. All right, and these are these beautiful bagels that you get at the end. Really simple, really easy to do. All right, good luck, guys.